this is where life begins. This is the most sacred, most precious ground that I have ever walked on. And it's so powerful because the blood of the caribou runs through my body. This place has been so sacred for thousands of years to my people, even in times of famine, my people don't come here. What is called the 1002 lands is the core of their, their calving grounds and they need this whole place. You can just look around in every direction, there's caribou and they go back and forth all over this land and they only stick around this core area. There's no other place for them, this is it. After looking at nearby Prudhoe Bay and Alpine, there's no way, there's absolutely no way the caribou can live with that kind of development, there's no way. Almost uncontrollable appetite for resources means that we put the caribou, we put other species in danger. And uh, coming here, you realize how important it is, not just to the caribou, but to us, to make sure we uh, remain human, to uh, protect these areas and protect these species. If you think about the fact that the caribou are the breadbasket of the Guchin peoples on both sides of the border, if you think of it that way, you realize it's a question of human rights. Don't the Guchin have a right to survive here in their own homeland? The world needs the cold in the Arctic. The world needs the cold wind currents from off the ice and the ocean. The world needs clean air, clean water. And this is where it's still relatively intact here in this place. But the Arctic is warming and it's changing. It's changing fast. We can't allow that to happen. We can't allow the destruction of these very sacred places, these biologically diverse areas, to be destroyed. There'll be nothing left. What is there after that? What is there? What is our purpose after that? The Americans are the people who invented the idea of the National Park Yellowstone in 1870. They developed the whole idea of protecting wilderness. They pioneered, and uh, they're not being true to themselves. That's the that's the part that is, uh, is sad. And, and if there's some way for us to remind them of their great tradition, because they are, in many ways, the world's greatest environmentalists, and they have, have shot themselves in the foot. The stage must come when you stop and say, what are we doing? Are we going to destroy everything? so that we can live extravagantly for another decade or two. The future of the porcupine caribou herd will be at risk until the coastal plain is permanently protected. The Arctic Refuge asks a fundamental question. Is there anywhere on Earth where we can say no to the industrial machine?
I think they will uh, maintain their commitment to protecting the land, to making sure that uh, the industrial frontier doesn't come to dominate the North in a way that excludes other values. There's a lot of things we have to look at today, but the only way of life comes from traditional value. That value has changed from the last 30 years. And today we have a modern world. And today we can live without both worlds. Slowly the modern world has taken over everything, the way of life. The young people are in between the two worlds. And I know there's a lot of uh, anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy in between the two worlds. In the last two, three years ago, my two <laughs> nephews are about 20 years old. And they're taking their lives. What are we heading into? Are we prepared personally? Do we have personal skills, life skills to, to cope with the problems of today? We need that kind of tools today to survive. When Berger first arrived in the Arctic, Aboriginal people were spectators, and now they are players in northern development. But there's an ancient suspicion that the lure and drive of the dominant society knows no bounds, and the Mackenzie Gas Project will start a race to harvest every molecule of gas in the north.